you want to go there, and on the top it says pounds per square inch. On the side is your gallons per minute. So what you want to do is go to, this pump makes 2,000 pounds. You go to 2,000 pounds. This, this chart does not go to 10.5 gallons a minute. The closest it goes to is 10.61. So you go to your side, and it's going to be a number 15 nozzle. That's the most important thing with any kind of pump. You have to match the nozzle to to the pressure and gallons per minute, okay? Everybody understand that? That's why when we say, when you come in to, to get nozzles, for instance, and somebody says, well, for instance, somebody will say, well, we use the green one. Well, the, the color, it doesn't represent the orifice size in the nozzle itself. It just represents the pattern of spraying. Okay, so what you want to do is always find out first what kind of pump you have. This is a Comet, like I said, TWS 3020. You want to match the nozzle to the pump. That's the most important thing. Okay. Now I'll show you a couple of valve, valves. How Bill was saying how these are valves that because of the pump is too high and it's having to suck water up, that's what happens to the valves. They get they just get really worn out because the pump's not created to do that, okay? Now this pump, we're going to start off with doing the valves. I'm not going to go into too much about the nozzles and stuff, just about matching them to the gallons per minute and the pressure. What we're going to talk about is going over the pump itself, okay? These are your valve caps. They come in high pressure and low pressure. First thing you do is, of course, I have it all loosened up, so take out your valve caps. are going to be your valves inside and they come with an o-ring underneath okay these are these have to go in like they are I usually pre lubricate because it makes it a lot easier to go in this pump itself it has an o-ring on the valve cap plus a backup ring not all pumps are the same different applications okay so what you want to do is pull out your old valves and then you want to look inside your casing in here to make sure there's no cavitation, there's no cracking in it, there's no damage to it. And actually I can, I'll show you guys later. But um, that's what you want to look for first. If you have valves that still look good, there's two, two ways of testing them. You can, a lot of people try blowing and sucking, that's not good. The easiest way to do is you get your valve, turn it upside down, put water in it. If it holds water, it's good. If water runs through it, it's not any good. That's it. Sometimes the valves from sitting, if you're running soap through it, sometimes they will get stuck. So you'll have no pressure and you're wondering why you have no pressure. A lot of times you got to pull out the valve and just break the seal. Okay? Now, after that, you got to check and make sure the oil rings are all good. And everything comes in the kit. When you buy the kit for the valves, it comes with your backup rings and your oil rings. Okay, you put these on. Same thing with the bottom valves. Go through them, check them, make sure they're good. If they're good, they're good. If they're not, they get replaced, okay? And on this chart also, I have the, the foot pounds per, you know, to tighten up everything. I'm not gonna do it now because it's just, it takes too much time to go through all that. Yeah, you guys stand around yeah. Okay, We've got eight head bolts. This is what we call the wet end of the pump. When you go to order parts, the best thing to do is to have the, the type of pump and the model of the pump. Okay, if you don't have that, what I suggest is bring in the whole head. We can always match seals to it if you don't have that. These are your pistons. When you when you do the seal kit, what I usually do is I'll spray the ceramics, and if you have any cracks in them, the um, your uh, carb cleaner. Well, this is carb cleaner. It'll it'll go right.
right in the crack and you'll be able to see it. That's what the first thing before you do seals, you want to make sure that you don't have any cracks in it, that they're not broken, they're not cavitated. That's the first thing you want to check. Okay, after you check that, you're good with that. This is a slide hammer and these are your dies to pull out the seal casings. These are your seal casings. And each one, like I said, each pump is different. See, these are your seals inside. And what I usually do is I just, how I pull them out, I just, I just place them just like how they are. That way, you won't get lost on where you're at. Okay, these are your seals. One thing you want to look for is also cavitation inside the pump. Make sure it's not cracked. Make sure you don't have any pieces that are broken off. The same thing with your seal casings. Okay, after you pull them out, just do the same thing. You just repeat it to go back. First, you're going to have your backup ring, which goes in first. Then you're going to have your seal. This is the backup ring for the seal itself, or, or a spacer. And it just goes in basically like this. You have an O-ring on the seal casing also. I want to, I'm going to put this out here and I'll show you guys the problem with this pump. I'll set that there. Let me put a flashlight. If you see right here, see where the, the valve sits? Let me grab a screwdriver. You can actually feel it. See how the cavitation is? See, so when this pump comes in, the first thing you want to check for is that you don't have that. And that's, this usually happens because lack of water, one. Another thing, lack of uh, servicing. See it right here? You can actually feel that. Okay. You can actually feel the... Yeah, you can actually feel oh, yeah. how it's worn. Yeah. yeah. Real. Those are things that you want to check in in the, the valves and also in the seals. Okay. Now, after you set it all back together, like I said, I got the the caps are 80 foot pounds, the heads are 45 foot pounds, and the ceramics, which are these. Uh, you know, I have all the torque specs on it. Now, this pump itself, it's it's about drive. But if, if, if it runs on a gas-powered engine, what we do is we use a gun with the pressure gauge to set the pressure. Now, when you set pressure, you're running the gun, and this is your unloaders. When you're setting the pressure, what you want to do is, like this is a 2,000-pound pump, but not necessarily means that it's going to make 2,000 pounds. Different variables. So what you want to do, when you let go of the gun, your spike should not be over 500 pounds. Okay, so if this is, say you're running at 2,000 pounds and it's at 2,000 pounds, you let go and it goes to 3,000 pounds, then you have to back off your unload, not over 500 pounds. Okay? If it's an electric motor, you always set pressure with a nap meter. Put it on the wire, make sure that it doesn't go over the, the electric motor's amp rate. Are, these are variable un regulated unloaders. What they do is uh, this is a hard unloader. When you hit the gun, it's going to give you pressure wide away. This is a soft unloader. When you hit the gun, it's going to come up really soft. Pretty much it. Yeah. Roger, you got it. You guys got any questions? Do you want me to do the whole pump? You guys. So once that's damaged like that, is that any that's not good anymore? The pump's still good. Okay. Yeah, no. What'll happen is you'll put in new seals and valves, and it'll lead them up in probably a day or two. It's not going to. The other thing you want to check is your oil.
Sometimes when your seals go bad, water will get inside the pump, the oil will turn milky white. That's one another reason why that'll happen is you could have a cracked ceramic. Okay, because water goes inside the seal casing. Yeah. That's what you want to check out first before you even get to let's go out and buy parts. Okay? Tell them to check the rods, see if the rods yeah. are and then yeah, another thing you want to do is when the pump is out, you want to check these rods that there's no play in them. And I'll show you this one. This is what happens to a pump when the rods go bad. It just tears it up. Okay. This pump here, all oh, the bearings went out on the sides. How long does it normally take, uh, obviously, your experience to, to rebuild one of those? I, I would say you, wanna, you don't want to rush it. You want to take at least an hour. I would say an hour to do the valves and seals, definitely. You want to go through every part, like I said, you see the casings, I'll pull one out. And when you go to pull them out, we suggest that you use these extractors because it doesn't tear up the, the seal casing. Where do you get those, those we, extractors? We, we have them here. Okay. We sell them here. You do? Yes. What's the price on them? Usually. About two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, and they come with all the sizes. Different size of pump has everyone has a different one. And the same thing with the seal, the casings. You want to make sure that there's no damage on them. And, and one reason, one thing that you want to see, see how smooth this comes out. It should fit in there tight. One thing that you want to look for is once the seal starts checkering, that's what you want to look for. Also, when it starts ripping. Okay, once they do that, okay. once they do that, that's when they need to be replaced. Alright. Okay, any questions or something I can go over it? What oil do you use in the gear? We use Comet oil. It's a 30, it's 30 weight Comet oil, but what it is, it's non-detergent. What it is, if you put in regular 30 weight oil in this, it'll foam up. This is created not to foam up, plus it has additives to keep the pump clean. You want to change the oil on a new pump, first 50 hours after that. Manufacturers suggest 500 hours, but we live in Arizona in the middle of the summer. We usually suggest uh, every 100 hours because it just gets so much hotter here than ever. So we, we suggest every hundred hours. These pumps, this one comes with uh, sight glass. You always want to fill up the pump half, halfway up the sight glass. If you can't get to the sight glass, they all come with a dipstick. And you just bring it up to, to the markings. You can identify the colors of the oil from the this way. Oh yeah, if, you, if your oil is dark, of course, once it starts turning dark, I can pull out a little bit, and you can see how clear this is. And it's just like motor oil. You guys, you guys can see how clear it is. Once it starts getting dark, there's been units that come in with a, both the oil's completely black. Lack of changing the oil creates heat in the pump, creates heat in the, in the ceramics, creates your seals to go bad. Okay? Now what's the frequency on servicing? The seals? Yeah. Really, when you start losing pressure, that's when you want to start. When you start losing pressure, the first thing you want to start with is your, of course, your nozzles. Because nozzles, just like anything else, wear out. The orifice size starts wearing out, you, you start losing pressure. Okay? So you first start with your nozzle. If the no nozzle's correct, the nozzle's good, then you want to go to your pump. You can, there's two ways of checking it. It's kind of a little bit more technical. Uh, you can, what I usually do is I'll remove the unloader and I'll test the pump itself to see how much pressure the pump's making. That way I'll elim eliminate the unloader, eliminate what's going on with the pump. Another way you can test the pump is like if you're on a water box, 
sometimes the water is it's being downstream fed so the pump you can't really tell what it's doing so what you want to do sometimes also is unhook it and direct feed it from a faucet and then that'll create pressure and then if it that's any leaks it'll, it'll show yeah you never want to test you never want to test the pump itself if you're going to test the pump itself I, you always have to tie this off because if you let this go it creates back pressure in the pump and it'll probably go over that so you always have to have this i don't lock it you always have to have oh. it tied down now the tips do you just automatically recommend just replacing those I I, yeah i replace i would say depending how like if you're using at 500 you know hours uh say it what six months 500 hours is about right I would suggest every six months. Yeah, it's so it's so much easier to replace the nozzle. And we sell nozzles here. We sell the loaders. We sell all your parts. If you guys have any questions while you're working on it, you guys can always call us, give us a ring, and we can walk you through any kind of problems that you're having. Okay. Any other questions? How many people here have done their pump wrong now? <laughs> well, we've really never gotten into one. Okay. We've got several. Yeah. yeah. Now we tempted it and we're like, well, yeah, it looks a little more time consuming. Is there any water inside there? It's the back seals in? <laughs> if water's inside, it's going to be your seals. No, inside the, for the oil is. The yeah, crank? It, it's yeah. Gonna be, oh, those seals? It's going to be these seals or it's going to be a cracked ceramic. Okay. If the ceramic's cracked, is that fixable? Oh, yeah, yeah. These are replaceable. If the pump, if you pull off the pump and, and the ceramic moves, the pump's no good. It means that the back is like this one. Now, now one thing, um, cat pumps, you can only put cat oil in. Comets, um, general pumps, um, AR pumps, all take comet oil. A lot of the manufacturers do that if it comes back for a warranty issue, the first thing they're doing is you didn't run our oil in it. Yeah. User error. Okay. So Any what other questions? problems do you run into that Herman might be able to answer? We, we experienced you know, loss of pressure where it works fine, two, three jobs, and then the next guy gets it, you know, it worked fine when we checked it in. And he gets it out there and there's no pressure. One, one thing about these pumps, especially like say you got cold water yeah, units, yeah. what happens is a lot of times when you're running the gun, some guys are too lazy. They'll set the gun down and they'll walk away from the unit. The, the water keeps running inside the pump. It reaches 180 degrees, it starts damaging the pump. So what you want to do, no more than three minutes, you got to shut the unit. You're not gonna. If it's, you're not gonna be using it. You want to shut the unit off. Another thing you don't want to do is what we call shotgunning it. You don't want to be using the gun like a spray gun. You want to keep a steady, a constant feed. So three minutes once you set that thing down. Once turn it off. Or turn it off or use it. Is that only cold cold water units? Cold water units, hot water units, they're all the same. So three, yeah, three, three minutes? minutes is the max, yeah. Now, now what if you're running now, it more than three minutes? Yeah. Now there's a different there's a difference, like on a trailer unit, as the one that we have there. We have, see this is the unloader. When it's bypassed back to the pump, like this one is here. Like this one here. This is your unloader. See, this is your bypass. It's running back to the pump. So when you have your gun shut off, the water is going back, coming in, going back, coming in, going back. That's when you're going to cause the damage. Three minutes. Now, I can show you, like on this trailer unit, what, what we do here at PSI is we bypass Instead of bypassing it back to the tank to the pump, we bypass it back to the tank. So what that yeah, so what that does, it keeps the water cold. Just as long as you have water in your tank, it's gonna have an ample amount of water, it's never gonna get hot. So that you can actually walk away 20, 30 minutes from it. It's only when it's bypassed back to the pump. And that's usually with your cold water units like these.
in layman terms, we call it like a radiator on a car. <laughs> it circulates. On the cold waters. 